Welcome back to Squawk Box this morning. Among the businesses suffering due to the coronavirus, restaurants have been hit particularly hard. Uh, with layoffs and dining room closures across the country, owners are expected to get some relief from Congress's $2 trillion stimulus package. But there are questions about just how much and how it would work. Joining us right now is Danny Meyer. He's the founder, of course, and CEO of Union Square Hospitality Group and founder of Shake Shack. Uh, he was uh, forced early on um, to uh, lay off about 80 percent of his uh, staff, uh, about 2,000 people. Uh, and I know, Danny, you've been combing through this bill to try to understand what it means for you. And so I'm hoping we can do that together and for so many other small businesses out there that are trying to understand what may come or not over the next several weeks. What are you seeing in this bill and, and how is it going to impact your business, you think? Well, as you said, we're definitely combing through it in real time. Contain aspects that will help the, the people who are laid off and every single restaurateur I've spoken to has had to lay off either some prominent part of their team or maybe even the whole team at this point. So there are measures to help people uh, with unemployment insurance. There should be measures to help uh, with small business loans to keep restaurants afloat because the two things that have always mattered in this are when it is safe to come back to work and to open our restaurants as great places that people gather, we need two things. We need a workforce that is healthy emotionally as well as physically, and right. we need to have businesses that are safe and, and solvent. So, so Danny, though, speak about the calculus, because what I keep hearing from business, uh, small business people is they say to themselves, OK, uh, look, I, I know that I'm running out of money if I keep everybody on the staff now, and I don't know if, what this money that I'm going to be getting is going to be in, in three weeks. So part of it is I'm just taking a gamble on whether I'm going to be able to get the loan. Then I got to figure out whether the loan is going um, to be ultimately forgiven or 90 percent of it's going to be forgiven. Am I better off uh, if I think that I can actually rehire these people later, keeping them off of my payroll? I've heard that. Uh, and I, I, I know you care so much about your employees, but people are also thinking about the economics of this. Just sort of walk through the calculus in your head uh, for your company and how, again, you think people need to think about that particular issue, even if they get the relief. And again, from what the bill looks like, it's a four-month program in restaurants. By the way, even in places where we may have a return to business, it may not be a return to business as normal. There may be social distancing efforts, every other table empty. Uh, it's going to be complicated. So walk us through the economics of it, though, for you. Yeah, it's going to be really, really complicated. And I, I have absolutely no idea uh, to be prescriptive for others. I'll tell you what we're doing right now. What we're doing is to leave things where they are for now, which was that we took the bitterest pill a week ago and laid off over 2,000 people in a company that at that moment had about 2,200 employees. That's massive. And we have done every single thing we can to help every one of those people to get access to unemployment insurance, provide all kinds of resources in every language that our, our team members speak, uh, to help them with childcare, to help them, uh, even even women who were pregnant when they got laid off have a special opportunity in our company to retain the benefits that they had, so that they can have that special day. God God forbid something happens uh, in their hospital, etc. So it's a horrible situation when you say to yourself, "The best thing I can do is to be the best unemployer." Uh, that I can possibly be. I mean, those, that's just an unfathomable idea. But we don't have the confidence yet to bring those people back on until we see exactly what is in this bill. The minute we understand what's in the bill and the minute we understand that our business can be back in business, we will do that. And we cannot wait for that. But but let's let's just remember one thing. We're dealing with two very, very different crises that are absolutely intersecting, but they're different. One is a health crisis. I have to, I just have to share, in this last couple of days, we lost one of our most cherished longtime uh, colleagues, a, a chef by the name of Floyd Cardoz. That hit our company hard, right in the gut. Uh, and what that kind of experience does when it hits you hard and, and somebody dies who you know, you remember that while we're trying to deal with the economic 
ramifications of this, which are massive, that at its core, this is a health crisis. And the business we're in is about bringing people together, bringing people together to cook. I don't know how to cook lots of meals being six feet apart from one another. I don't know how to do that. And even though it's now legal to serve food in a takeout model and in a, in a to-go model, a lot of the people on our team are saying, please, let's wait till it feels a little bit safer. So until we get that part done, I cannot imagine bringing people back onto our payrolls uh, to do nothing at this point. So as long as we know that the government is taking care of our people, that's exactly where we're going to leave them. Danny, Danny, we got to we got to go. But even in just 10 seconds, even if you if you got 90 percent of it paid for by the government, you wouldn't put those people back on your payrolls. As long as I knew that it was safe to bring them back and that I'm not putting them in harm's way by so doing, yes, I would bring them back. OK, well, look, we wish you uh, a lot of luck uh, and so many other restaurateurs and small businesses a lot of luck uh, over these next weeks and months.